morning and welcome to worship. I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. I saw some pictures. Um, I was down in Owatonna and had a lovely, lovely time with the Fjallstead family. So, um, we do have potluck after worship today, so please join us. Also, during the season of Advent, we are using the reverse Advent calendar that was in your newsletters to focus on food bank needs. Um, so let's see how many boxes of those 24 items we can accumulate. Other announcements? Not let us stand and welcome God into our presence. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please join us in our call to worship. We stand at the, on the watch post. Waiting for God's vision. The night has been appointed. The vision is sure. No matter what happens, we will rejoice in God. Please be seated. Just as the prophet Habakkuk stood at the watch post to see what you would say, O oh God, so we too see the brokenness of the world and long for your message to be made plain. this first candle as a sign of hope that you have heard your people and will answer us in our distress. Let, Let us light the beginning to all who wait, a sure sign that our redemption is coming to us. <clears throat> Let us sing like one candle, first verse. before God and one another. Let us pray. Radiant God, you have come to live among us, yet we fail time and again to see you in the faces of our neighbors. We look to ourselves instead of those in need. We seek the shallow comforts of things we can buy instead of the deep and lasting comfort of your presence. Forgive our stubborn refusal to see and open our eyes to the joy and wonder of your incarnation. Amen. <clears throat> Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. The God of boundless grace forgives you all your sins, renewing your spirit for the sake of Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. We turn to our gathering hymn. My Lord, what a morning, number 438. Please stand. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, with Habakkuk we cry out to you in despair at the evil in the world. As we begin our waiting for your promised Savior, give us hope that all will be made right in you. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our first reading this morning is from the prophet Habakkuk. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not listen? Or cry to you violence and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. <clears throat> if it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. The brightness was like the sun. Rays came forth from his hand, where his power lay hidden. Before him went pestilence, and plague followed close behind. He stopped and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The eternal mountains were shattered. Along his ancient pathways, the everlasting hills sank low. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. <clears throat> I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer and makes me tread upon the heights to the choir master with string instruments. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Turn to our gathering hymn. We wait for you. This is a new one, so let's have a man to play it through for us once.
Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I would invite Becca and the children forward. <coughs> Yeah. 
God is weak, we can be very scared. So we need to remember to keep building our faith stronger by doing the things that have affected. Can you imagine that your faith is lifting dumbbells every time you do one of those exercises? Your faith will get huge. So let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for helping us make our faith stronger so we can trust in you more. We love you. Children. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, the risen Christ. Amen. One of my favorite Christmas carols asks, Do you see what I see? Do you hear what I hear? Do you know what I know? This carol ends with the words with words of good news. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. The child, the child sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. Reading the oracle of Habakkuk makes me think that he would have loved to have heard that promise. Instead, his pleas and lament only elicit gloom and doom from our God. The prophet is writing to the southern kingdom of Judah about the same time as Jeremiah was writing, Babylon is ready to strike, and that is cause for fear and trembling, even for these people who thought they were so safe. Worse yet, God says that Babylon will bring about the justice, and a better translation of the Hebrew here would be punishment for the injustice of the people. Had I been Habakkuk, my response would certainly have been to argue with God. I would surely have said, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's not what I'm asking you to do. Yes, the sins of these people are significant, but come on, an invasion by Babylon would destroy the nation, not save it. <clears throat> well, in fact, that's exactly what the prophet does. And this time, God's response is not a solution to any problems. You know, in my work, I hear it lament fairly often. As human beings, we tend to want answers, solutions, even quick fixes for all the things that are wrong in our lives. We get sick and we go to the doctor. Well, often, <coughs> answers we receive are not what we are looking for. There's nothing I can do for you. You will just have to wait for your own body to take care of the virus. Or you have cancer, and it has spread through most of your body already. We can try to keep it at bay with chemo or radiation, but barring a miracle, there is no hope for a cure. He walked out on me and my kids. What am I do now? My, my unemployment runs out in two weeks. I don't know where to turn. The jobs just aren't out there for someone with my skills. That list is just a sample of the threats we encounter. For Judah, the threat was as grim as a terminal disease. Babylon was about to march in, destroy their towns and cities, and take all of the really, really valuable people into exile. All of the skilled craftsmen and laborers would be gone. All of the most influential leaders would be taken away. The entire nation would be ruined. So Habakkuk asks, where are you, God? Don't you see what is happening? What are you going to do to save us? I think you and I often ask those kinds of questions. 
women offer up some compelling evidence of how good and faithful and obedient we are. Our hope is usually for a quick fix. Waiting for anything is not something we are very good at doing. We pray. We complain. We search everywhere for a solution. And often, all we really can do is wait and hope. God's answer to the prophet seems like a non-answer. The righteous will live by their faith? Really? What does that mean? We, the faith God speaks about is not a, a placid, do-nothing, waiting game. For the prophet, faith isn't even an answer or a solution. Faith is a way of life. Faith is an active trust in what cannot be seen. In fact, the writer of Hebrews tells us that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Do you see what I see? Well, faith counters that question with a huge yes, but... Yes, but God is still in control. Yes, but God has made promises, and our God always keeps promises. Yes, but God made good of the big promise and came to visit us in the form of a human baby, a dying Savior, and a not-at-all-dead Lord. Faith is a way of life. Faith allows us to find the patience, the courage, and the will to overcome the threats we see all around us. Faith is what we are given to be able to sing our praises in the face of destruction. In 2010, when the hurricane devastated Haiti, one young man demonstrated faith in a way that speaks volumes to this world of hurt and despair. He was trapped beneath tons of wreckage with little or no hope of rescue. What his companions heard that day, the last they heard from him, was a hymn of praise to his God, our God. The man's name was Ben. Ben could not sing because of what he saw or heard. Not because of any promise of rescue. He could sing because God had given him the faith in all of the promises God offers each of us. Faith is a way of life. Faith is what allows us to push forward even when the future looks bleak. We have a faithful God. This God isn't the quick fix kind of God this world would sometimes like. But we live each day trusting that God's will is going to be done. Injustice, disease, even death will never have the final say. Faith is a way of life that overcomes all of the terror we see and all of the horrors we hear. So we wait patiently for God to reveal God's will. And we wait actively doing our part to help that happen. The hope of this Advent season is a hope we can trust. God will win the battles. Meanwhile, we are given a faith that can sing in the face of disaster. We, have given, we are given faith to believe the stars and the child who came to us. The child of Christmas brings peace and goodness and light. That is something we can count on now and all the days of our lives. Amen. Let's turn to our next hymn.
Let all mortal flesh keep silence. It's number 490. Please stand. Church, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God's promises are true, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, Habakkuk spoke wisely when he praised your name even in the midst of disaster. Make us ever mindful of our own despair and teach us how faith can defeat even the most grievous suffering. We call on our God. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Make us thoughtful caretakers of all that you have made. Remind us that your promises are tangible, often made real and revealed through the people and the things that you have created. We call on our God, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Give wisdom and hope to all who lead, that they might govern with justice and mercy, and in the full knowledge of your presence, Without guidance. We call on our God, O come, O come, man. Pour your healing upon all who suffer, who are ill, who grieve, or who need the pro promise of your presence in their lives, especially Betty, Gerald, Frank, 
Marty, Greg, Bill, Stan, Terry, Cindy, Barb, Kevin, Alessandra, Axel, Cassie, Harry and Judy, Trish, Gordy, Andy and Mary, Daisy, Harlan, Leanne, Jim, Rick, and their families, and the families and friends of Janice Nelson, Donald Tracy, Mike er Erickson, and Jenny Heikerman. We call on our God, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us not forget at this time of hustle and bustle that there are those in your midst whose need is greater than ours. Help us to provide where we are able. Help us to ask when we have need. We call on our God, O come, O come, Emmanuel. With joy we remember the saints for the blessed ways they have followed faith. May we follow their example until we feast together in eternity. We call on our God, O come, O come, Emmanuel. In faith, hope, and love, we lift our prayers to you in the name of your promised Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share peace. Please be seated, we receive our offering. saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> God, our strength, makes our feet like the deer and makes us tread upon the heights. Let us come to the table with joy and share in the feast that is Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in the meal you have remembered in your mercy, bringing health to earth in the body and blood of Christ, as we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. Receive the blessing. God, the, the eternal word, who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We turn to our closing hymn. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. It's number 836.